Hey y'all, uh, so we're going to take some notes over something called clauses. Uh, you may be familiar with this term, uh, it's a grammar concept. Um, so again, it's not the most interesting thing that we're going to talk about, but it's necessary. Uh, it has to do with one of the standards uh, that you'll be tested on. Uh, and so this will also come up in the post assessment that you'll take. Um, and we'll be doing some other class activities having to do with it. So as we're going through this, I highly, highly encourage you to take some notes uh, to write down some of the stuff. Um, that uh, I say and also make sure you're getting down the information that's displayed on the screen as well. Um, I know many of y'all were really hoping there would be more YouTube videos with notes, so you're welcome. Congratulations. All right, let's get started. Okay, so a clause is a group of words that act together that contain what's called a subject and a predicate. It's a group of words acting together that always contain both a subject and a predicate. Has to have those two things. Okay, so when we talk about parts of speech, really there's two different ways that we can refer to words. So we can talk about their form or what the words are, or we can talk about their function, which is what the words do. So subjects and predicates are functions. Okay, those are um, ways that we refer to what a word is doing. So there are specific types of words, types of parts of speech um, that form subjects and form predicates. So you can see here subjects in the red and in the italics can be either nouns or pronouns. Okay, y'all know what nouns are, um, pronouns, he, she, it, um, all, all of those. Okay, and we'll go over that stuff later on. Predicates. What you typically want to think of the predicate is as the verb, okay? So it can be an action verb, a helping, or a linking verb. But basically, predicates um, are what verbs do, okay? So here's an example where I have the predicate um, in blue and it's underlined, and the subject is in italics, um, and it's in red. So the Spanish teacher, the subject, is predicate bad. All right, so we go back, a clause is a group of words acting together as a unit that contains both a subject and a predicate. Now there's two specific types of clauses. We have an independent clause, and these are clauses that can stand on their own. Basically, they're sentences in their own right. So if I were to walk up to you and say, the Spanish teacher is bad, um, there, you may be a little bit confused like, based off of context what I'm talking about, but that's a sentence that makes sense, okay? The Spanish teacher is bad. It can stand independent from, from anything else and still make sense, okay? Can stand on their own. Second type of clauses are the dependent clauses. These clauses cannot stand on their own and make sense, and they always have a subordinating conjunction. And we'll talk about what a subordinating conjunction is on the next slide but it's important for you to understand that they cannot stand on their own. They're dependent on other words, other pieces of, of information to make sense. So imagine a scenario where you're just like walking down the hallway. Um, we haven't had a conversation about a Spanish teacher or anything like that at all. Really, it's like the first time I've seen you during the day. We're walking down the hallway and I just go, because he ruins lives. And then I turn around and don't say anything else. Walk away. Would that make sense? It wouldn't. Clearly, there's more information that you need to know uh, to figure out what it is I'm talking about. That, that clause, because he ruins lives, is dependent on something else. Okay, so I have a special guest here to help me out with this slide. This is Waylon. Waylon is hungry. Okay, so clauses are always linked together by two different kinds of conjunctions. There are the coordinating conjunctions and there are subordinating conjunctions. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with coordinating conjunctions. Those are the fanboys for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so, okay? Um, that is the grand total of all coordinating conjunctions. There are not any other ones. Um, they link uh, to independent clauses. And subordinating conjunctions, there are tons of them. Um, in fact, new ones are created, but there's lots and lots of ones. So subordinating conjunctions put one clause below or they attach it to another clause. 
Examples of this would be because, although, while, whenever, etc. Et there are tons and tons of them, uh, way too many to list. That's right, Waylon, huh? Right. Say goodbye. Good job. So Waylon had to go, but we're going to continue on. Uh, so we need to talk about something called sentence types. Um, and sentences can be classified by the types of clauses that make them up. I'm sure you're familiar with these four types, uh, but we're going to go, go over them again just so we're all on the same page. Four types are simple, compound, complex, and compound, complex. All right. We'll go over specifically what they are in the following slides. Okay. A simple sentence is made up of one single independent clause. So even though this isn't true, a simple sentence could be Waylon is sleeping. We have one subject, Waylon, one predicate is sleeping. Okay, and there's no conjunctions there at all. Okay, the second type is the compound sentence. So this is made up of two independent clauses linked together by a coordinating conjunction or a, a fanboy. So Waylon was sleeping, but he woke up. Waylon was sleeping and he woke up are two independent clauses, but is the coordinating conjunction. So because there's two, it's compound, it's a compound sentence. All right, the third kind is the complex sentence. So it's made up of one independent clause and at least one dependent clause and at least one subordinating conjunction. So I say at least because you can add multiple dependent clauses uh, with their subordinating conjunctions and you can do that really um, for as long as you want to add stuff and it's still a complex sentence. So a simple one would be Waylon woke up because he is, he is hungry. <clears throat> Waylon woke up would be the independent clause, because is the subordinating conjunction, and then because he is hungry is a dependent clause. Second one, it has multiple dependent clauses, so again, the same independent clause, Waylon woke up, then dependent, because he is hungry, even though he basically just drank his entire uh, body weight in milk a, an hour ago. So our, our two subordinating conjunction, conjunctions there are because and even though. All right, complex sentence. Okay, the last kind is the compound complex sentence. So just like the complex sentence, we can add multiple different parts um, to make, make this, uh, this kind of sentence up. But it has to have at least two independent clauses, at least one coordinating conjunction that brings the independent clauses together, at least one dependent clause, and at least one subordinating conjunction. So we could say, whenever he is hungry, Waylon glares at me and I give him his bottle because I don't want to awaken the beast. All right, whenever he is hungry, that's a dependent clause. Subordinating conjunction for that one is whenever. Our other dependent clause, because I don't want to awaken the beast, um, because is the subordinating conjunction. Our two independent clauses, Waylon glares at me I gave him his bottle and would be the, uh, the coordinating conjunction, the fanboy. Okay, so I'm sure y'all are familiar with those sentence types. We need to talk about commas. People use commas all over the place. They don't know where to, com uh, where to use commas. I personally had a teacher, I think it was in fourth grade, tell me whenever you stop and take a breath, that's when you use a comma. Um, and I would imagine if I were able to ask y'all in person, probably at least a third of the, the class's hands would go up. Here's the deal. That's not true. <laughs> that is bad advice. Don't listen to it. I don't know why teachers say that, but it's incorrect. So here's when you use a comma. You're doing a list. Okay. And if you're not doing a list, these two reasons are the only other reason why you would use a comma. Okay. So only use the comma when you are one, bringing two independent clauses together with a coordinating conjunction. Waylon is good at tummy time, comma, but he still can't hold up his head. All right, Waylon is good at tummy time is an independent clause. He still can't hold up his head is another independent clause. We have but as a coordinating conjunction. So to link those two together, 
we have to add the comma. All right, second reason why you would ever use a comma. If you are putting a dependent clause before an independent clause. So we have, because he is so good at tummy time, it will only be a matter of time. Because he is so good at tummy time is a dependent clause. We have because as the subordinating conjunction. Notice it comes before the independent clause. It will only be a matter of time. Because the dependent goes before the independent, we have a, a comma separating the two of them. Now notice, if you have an uh, independent clause and then a dependent clause, there is no comma. So that second sentence down, it's basically saying the exact same thing, but the order is flipped. Um, instead of dependent, independent, we have independent, dependent. It will only be a matter of time because he is so good at tummy time. All right, independent clause, dependent clause. No commas necessary there. All right, so that's basically the notes over clauses. Um, you're gonna do an activity next called painting with parts of speech, and we'll probably revisit the same activity uh, a couple times over the course of the year. But basically, you're gonna be looking at, at a piece of art or a, a photograph and describing it uh, with a sentence. Um, I'll tell you, use this kind of clause and underline it, or use this kind of sentence and describe the, the painting. Um, and that's basically it. It's really simple stuff. The directions are on the PowerPoint uh, that you'll see, but it's on Canvas. So look there. As always, um, send me an email if you have questions or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so until next time.